Hello and welcome back to Aviation Avi. Go where you feel the most alive. Today we'll be learning about the runway markings with the help of ICAO NX14 Aerodromes Volume 1, that is Aerodrome Design and Operations. First, we must understand what a runway is. So, a runway is a rectangular area on land aerodrome that is prepared for landing and takeoff of an aircraft. The first marking we are looking at here is the runway threshold marking. The runway threshold is the beginning of the portion of the runway that is usable for landing. And the runway threshold is designated by these threshold stripes that have a length of 30 meter and a width of 1.8 meter with a spacing of 1.8 meter between each stripe. And the spacing between the innermost stripe is double that of 1.8 meter. Now, as per ICAO NX14, the stripes shall extend laterally to within 3 meter of the edge of the runway or to a distance of 27 meter on either side of the runway central line, whichever results in smaller lateral distance. Now, let us consider that the total width of our runway is 60 meter. So, as per condition 1, the stripes shall extend laterally to within 3 meter of the edge of the runway. So let us consider that these threshold stripe extend 3 meter inward on both sides from the edge of the runway. So what is the effective width of the threshold marking is 60 meter minus 6 meters that is 3 meter on each side of the runway that is 54 meters. Now the condition 2 gives that the stripes shall extend laterally to a distance of 27 meter on either side of the runway central line. So here again what happens is from the runway central line on each side the spread is 27 meter. So the effective total width becomes 54 meters. So in both these cases condition 1 and condition 2 gives us the same total width or the lateral spread of the runway threshold marking. Out of these two conditions, we choose the case which gives us a smaller spread, lateral spread for the runway threshold marking. But in this case, it is the same applying both the conditions. So either can be used. Now let us consider the width of the runway is more than 60 meters, let's say 75 meters. In that case, applying condition 1 would give us a total spread of 75 meter minus 6 meter that is 69 meters. And applying condition 2 will give us the total width of 27 meter plus 27 meter that is 54 meters. So applying condition 2 gives us a smaller lateral spread. So we paint the runway threshold marking 27 meter on each side of the runway central line rather than painting it 3 meter inward from the runway edge marking when the total runway width is 75 meters. So here in this case we use condition 2 because it gives us a smaller lateral spread of the runway threshold marking. From the previous slide we could understand that the effective width of the runway for painting of runway threshold stripes is of 60 meters at the maximum. Now again the number of stripes of the runway threshold that are to be painted depends on the width of the runway. Suppose the width of the runway is of 45 meters, then you will see that the number of stripes or the number of threshold stripes is 12. In case the width of the runway is 60 meters, the number of stripes painted is 16. Since here in the image you can see a total of 12 stripes, you can understand that this is a runway of 45 meters in width. Now in case our runway is a non-position approach runway or a non-instrument runway, of 45 meter or greater width then a threshold marking can be marked in this way also where the runway designation marking is present between the threshold stripes and the distance between the innermost stripes is 22.5 meter and between the this space the runway designation marking is present now that we have understood the runway threshold marking we look at the runway designation marking which is nothing but a two digit number which is a whole number nearest to one tenth of the magnetic north when viewed from the direction of approach. When this gives us a single digit number, the single digit number is again supplemented by a zero. 
to understand the whole rule and the whole method of determining the runway designation you can click on the link given in the description when there is a system of parallel runways in that case the runway designator of such runways are supplemented by letters which are l for left r for right and c for center these are all marked considering the reference as the direction of approach so let us consider a system of two runways two parallel runways in that case the left runway is given the designator l and the right as r in case of three parallel runways the runway on the left has a designator supplemented by the letter l the runway on the center has a designator supplemented by the letter c and that on the right is supplemented with the letter r in case of four parallel runways the four parallel runways can be marked as l r and further l and r now this again has a further catch we will understand the catch in the further slide but let us here look at an example here in the image you can see a set of four parallel runways but the designation here differs this is runway 08 r this is 08 l which is again parallel to 09 r and 09 l as in the image this shift in designation is what we'll understand in the further slide before which let us understand how are the markings done firstly leaving 6 meters from the threshold the threshold stripes are marked again further leaving a gap of 12 meters the runway designator is marked which has a minimum length of 9 meter and again in case the runway designator is supplemented by a letter in case of parallel runways the gap between the runway designator and the letter l or r or c whichever the case may be has a gap of 6 meters minimum we will understand the case of four parallel runways considering the example of delhi international airport now let us consider this provision in annex 14 on four or more parallel runways one set of adjacent runway shall be numbered to nearest 1/10th magnetic azimuth and the other set of adjacent runways numbered to next nearest 1/10th of magnetic azimuth so to understand this let us consider the example of runway 1028 first the true bearing of runway 10 is 104.25 degrees rounding of this true bearing to 1/10 of the magnetic north gives us the runway designator of 10 now let us look at the runway parallel to runway 10 which is this runway having a true bearing of 103.28 rounding of this bearing to 1/10 of the magnetic north gives us a runway designator of 10 but in reality using this provision as given in annex 14 The actual designation given at Delhi Airport for this runway is one one, because the first the one set of adjacent runway shall be numbered to nearest one tenth of magnetic azimuth. So let us consider this as the first set of runway, which is given the designation one zero as derived from the true bearing here. Now the second other set of adjacent runway. is number to the next nearest 1/10 the next nearest 1/10 to runway 10 derived from this true bearing becomes 11 and so the second runway at delhi airport is numbered 11 so in reality runway 1028 and runway 1129 are actually parallel but under this provision of icao nx14 they are numbered as 1028 and 1129 The next marking we will talk about is the runway central line marking which is the combination of stripes and gaps and is present between the two runway designation marking on each side of the runway as per icao nx14 the length of the stripe plus the length of the gap together should not be less than 50 meter or more than 75 meter and the length of each stripe should be such that it is equal to the length of the gap and should not be less than 30 meters the width of this stripe shall be not less than 0.9 meter on precision approach runway of category 2 or 3 or 0.45 meter on non precision approach runway 
where code is 3 or 4 and precision approach runway of category 1. The next marking we are looking at is the transfer stripe and the displaced threshold marking. There are cases when the runway threshold is not present at the extremity of the runway that is there is a displaced threshold or there may be cases where the runway threshold is not square with the runway center line. In that case, there is a transverse stripe like this that is added to the runway threshold marking. This stripe has a width of 1.8 meter. In case the threshold is displaced temporarily, all the markings before the threshold is obliterated other than the runway center line marking which is again converted into arrows to convey a message to the approaching aircraft that the threshold is displaced. The next marking we'll talk about is the aiming point marking as you can see in the image here. As the name suggests, the landing aircraft aims to touch down at this particular point on the runway. The aiming point marking commences no closer to the threshold than the distance that is mentioned in Table 5-1 of ICAO NX-14. As per this table, the aiming point marking is based on the landing distance available for a runway. Now since for most of the civil aerodromes, the landing distance available is more than 2400 meters, we'll talk about this particular case. The distance of the aiming point marking from the threshold is 400 meters, the length of the stripe is 45 to 60 meters, and the width of this stripe is 6 to 10 meters and the lateral spacing between the two inner sides of the stripe is 18 to 22.5 meters. Basically, this distance is adjusted in order to reduce contamination due to rubber deposit on each landing. Next marking we'll talk about is the touchdown zone marking, which are nothing but rectangular stripes that are present on each side of the runway from the direction of approach. These stripes have particular specifications and have two patterns. Considering pattern 1, these are a set of rectangular stripes that are present on each side of the runway at a distance of 150 meters for each set of the stripe and the spacing between each set of stripe also being 150 meters. The length of each stripe is 22.5 meters and has a width of 3 meters. The pattern B of touchdown zone marking is distance coded. Basically, the first set of marking that comes after 150 meter from the threshold has three stripes having length of 22.5 meters and each stripe having a width of 1.8 meter and is spaced by 1.5 meter from the adjacent stripe. The next stripe that comes at 300 meters from the threshold again is distance coded. Further, each set of stripe is present at a distance of 150 meter from each other. Another point to be noted is that the aiming point marking, wherever it comes, if there is any touchdown zone marking that comes within 50 meter of the range of the aiming point marking, that particular set of touchdown zone marking is obliterated. The number of pairs of touchdown zone marking is related to the landing distance available. As in most civil aerodromes, the landing distance available between the two thresholds is more than 2400 meters. So the pair of touchdown zone marking is 6. Let us understand this in the image. Like you see, for this particular runway, there were supposed to be 6 touchdown zone markings. But since the aiming point markings comes at a distance of 400 meters from the threshold like we discussed earlier, the third set of touchdown zone marking here is obliterated because it would come within 50 meter of this aiming point marking. The last marking we will talk about here is the runway side stripe marking. As you can see here, this is present between the thresholds of the runway on each edge of the runway. Now in case the runway has a width of more than 60 meters, this runway side stripe marking is present at a distance of 30 meter on each side of the runway center line. The width of this marking is 0.9 meters for runways of total width of 30 meter 
and 0.45 meters for narrower runways. Hope you enjoyed this video on runway markings. Do not forget to visit our website aviationavi.com where you can find more such informative content. To like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation. You can follow us on LinkedIn, the link of which is given in the description. This is Anvesha Pal signing off. Thank you.